Welcome to the Sportsman's Voice Podcast, your inside connection to the outdoor legislation. From the beltway to policy happening your way, we're covering it all. I'm your host, Fred Bird. Join us as we explore public land access, wildlife and fisheries management, Second Amendment rights, the triumphs that shape our nation, the sports we all love, and the stories that fuel our passion for the great outdoors. This is the Sportsman's Voice Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to a new episode of the Sportsman's Voice Podcast, the official podcast of the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation. Folks, we're welcoming in our coordinator, the Collegiate Sportsmen and Women's Coalition, Isabella Mucci. Uh, we're going to talk about the collegiate program. We're going to get into uh, how to set up a program. What you know, what what is it all about? How's it helping the college kids? Where are the college kids getting out of it? Uh, we're going to welcome in a couple of her uh, students that she's currently working with, Jake Tipton out of Old Miss and Helen Bailey out of Clemson. So sit back, relax, hit play on this here, and uh, let's get into it. Welcome back to another episode of the Sportsman's Voice podcast. Uh, I got a few guests for you this week. We're going to dive into our collegiate program and and the manager of that program, Isabella Mucci, uh, CSF staff member, is joining us with a couple of her uh, collegiate uh, all-stars. Is that fair to say? Am I overselling it? I think that's fair to say that I think that they're all stars. <laughs> cool. Well, Isabella, why don't you go ahead and introduce uh, a couple of folks that are here, where they're from, and uh, what they're doing for CSF on the ground in their respective universities. So we're here with Jake Tipton and Helen Bailey. Jake is a student at Ole Miss, and he's from Tennessee. And Helen is a student at Clemson and is from Maryland. All right, right on. Two warm climates. Take that. All right. So let's dive into it then. Uh, Izzy, why don't, uh, Isabella, uh, guys, I'm going to do this throughout the episode. I'm going to try to do my best. Isabella does not like Izzy. I'm going to acknowledge that up front, but I have a couple of Isabellas in, in, in my universe that, that go by Izzy. So no offense, ma'am. I'll do my best to keep it straight. Isabella, why don't you tell us about the program, its inception, what the idea behind our collegiate program at CSF is all about, and how it's helping. Uh, conservation efforts, CSF, and then as well as uh, students on the ground. Yeah, so CSF has had this collegiate program for a couple of years now, but we haven't had dedicated staff to help build this program into, um, you know, a national program uh, with good geographical diversity across the country until about six months ago. And so that's where I come in and Originally, I started by um, pitching one of my professors at the Public Policy Institute at the University of Mississippi, my alma mater, about uh, wanting to start a collegiate sportsman and women's coalition at Ole Miss. And he connected me with Jake Tipton, who was actually one of my classmates when I was in school. And he has been a great help in getting the Ole Miss coalition stood up and uh, they've had a great first year so far. And I'm also working in this new role to make connections with folks at a variety of different schools across the country, people like Helen Bailey, who we got connected with through her father, who's a state legislator um, and has been involved with CSF for quite some time. Um, and so I was really excited about being able to connect with Helen and uh, work to bring a collegiate coalition to Clemson as well. Awesome. And I know we're currently in talks with other schools right now. So the, the program is, is growing in earnest and we're certainly excited about a lot of those organizations coming on board. So uh, well done there. What's the process? So, I mean, how did you guys, I know you just kind of gave the story with Jake, like what's the process for folks that are interested? They're hearing this podcast, they're being made aware of what CSF can offer. Like how do they go about doing this besides reaching out to you? Like is, I know there's an involved process too. Yeah. So it really does vary um, school to school, but generally um, you're going to need a couple of students, typically three to five are the most common numbers that I've seen on the campuses that I've worked on so far. Uh, and most schools are also going to require a faculty advisor. And typically you also need to submit some paperwork to the university, usually a constitution or bylaws and some sort of, you know, just like an agreement form. Um, so really it's just kind of, a matter of 
finding the right students on campus, them connecting with um, a faculty member who they would like to serve as an advisor. And sometimes I find a faculty advisor who's interested before the students and they go back and look at, you know, their class rosters and students that they have relationships with and, you know, find students that they think would be interested in helping to start a collegiate coalition on campus. So really, yeah, it's just kind of a combination of finding the right people at a school and going through the whatever process that school has mandated for new student organizations. That's generally how uh, these things get started at different schools around the country. Right on. Jake, what was the process like for you uh, getting it going? Um, it was a little different. I, I mean, Isabella being an old Miss kind of helped out a lot. I was doing an internship up in D.C. at the time, so she did a lot of the groundwork to get it started. And then right when I got to campus, we just started working on getting members. So we went straight from, I mean, having pretty much nothing with just me and two other people to going and getting how many people we get at that first thing. I think we got like 40 people sign up. How about it? With the first week of school. I mean, we we knocked it out of the park the first week. I, I don't want to brag too much, but we did pretty good. Um, Isabella did a lot of the groundwork, uh, teaming up with Dr. Holland on campus, getting all those parts set up. Uh, biggest challenge that we had was trying to get all the RSO things figured out, uh, just registering for the student organization. That had some hoops. We had to make up a whole constitution and everything like that just to do all the, you know, the fun paperwork stuff when it comes to starting up a club. But besides that, there really weren't a whole lot of challenges. It was pretty streamlined getting it started. Yeah, what what goes into that? Like, how in depth does your your constitution go, and and what are what's the school looking for as far as coverage on that, and and what they're trying to outline? So the uh, school wants a general mission statement, what the goals of the club are. Um, they want just rules for elections, uh, standard rules of like how a meeting's going to be run, and then it goes into goes into some other stuff that kind of aligns a lot more with fraternities and sororities rather than a, you know, club like us. So those were just kind of a general thing that we just had to put in there for, I guess, kind of just like a legality thing for the university. But Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it sounds like it wasn't a lot of stuff, but it was just a lot of writing. I think it's like a one page document. Ellen, how about you? How was that was the process at Clemson? And, and did you uh, obviously you guys are, are here, so you must have had some level of success there as far as recruiting went? Yeah, so we're still working on it. Um, Isabella and I got in contact, I think, around September. Um, and I was able to then use some of my connections with the National Wild Turkey Federation and the Ducks Unlimited uh, chapters at Clemson, as well as like the Wildlife Society and Sigma Alpha, some of the organizations. I'm involved in to kind of spread the word and see who is interested and just like word of mouth putting it out on all social media I was sending out on every group me I was a part of I was like if anybody's interested like reach out to me so then I was able to make a list of people that we had and then from there I had to make um, set up a meeting with a student consultant because Clemson has a whole center for their student engagement and we this organization would fall under an independent student organization so we don't need a constitution or a faculty advisor to continue we just needed to get approved from the organ uh, from the university so that's where we're headed now and we can officially register in March so it's been going good so far and we'll have um, some leadership, positions as well so in in doing so for so for both of you you know what what are the motivations the makeup of the the students that are in your organizations outdoors men and women anglers what what are what are folks looking for and to get out of this and what's the, the big goal helen i'll start with you this time okay um i would say we i was very um impressed that we had a decent amount of people that are interested in the outdoors, like people that go hunting, people that are fishing, anglers, all of that. But then I also had some interest from people that were not, um, like they're like, I'm looking to get involved with something like this. I don't, like I want to learn more about it. So on the education side. So I would say that's a big thing um, that I'm interested in is um, educating and 
teaching people about the difference in conservation and preservation and um, going forward with that. Jake, how about yourself? I'd say the average for the people in the club are a lot of them grew up hunting and fishing. They have a lot of experience with it, but most of them were not as knowledgeable about the purpose of hunting and how it helps out with conservation and things along those lines. And through the club, we've been able to educate hunters a little bit more on the bigger picture of uh, the club's goal. So it's it's been kind of interesting and in just helping people learn more things about something that they just think is, you know, a family tradition or a good thing to go do on a weekend. Sure. What what are the, uh, I guess, the majors for a lot of the folks that are joining your organizations? Do they do they line up with uh, a wildlife uh, conservation science degree? Or does it kind of run the gamut and people are just wetting their whistle? So a lot of them don't. It's a lot of public policy kits, political science, business school, even some people in accounting. Mm -hmm. But one goal that we have for this semester is to start reaching out to the science department and trying to bring kids from, you know, STEM backgrounds or biology or just other sciences to get them interested and try and get a whole nother part of the university that we don't have a connection. Yeah, with. sure. Helen, how about yourself? Clemson has a very big uh, College of Agriculture, which is what I'm in myself. So that's what most of our people are from. Like we've got environmental natural resources, wildlife and fisheries, bio, animal and veterinary sciences, um, forestry is a big thing. So we're kind of branched out into that. I'm looking to get more people that are in like legal studies um, and public policy and things like that. It's interesting, right? Because, you know, obviously with CSF, we're directly involved with policy at the state and federal level. So folks that are that are angling that way towards their their career progression they're you know finishing school and then and getting out into the world there's a there's a lane there um outdoorsmen and women with it like you know jake you're talking about kids that are brought up in it there's a, a neat wrinkle there if, if they can combine the both of them but on the science side i think it's really important you know we see we observe that uh young professionals coming out of college situations and, and, you know, we're kind of blessing them as industry professionals. They get picked up by, a, you know, a state agency or U.S. Fish and Wildlife. And, and recently, and, and Isabella, you can attest to this, I think, so many of them don't have hands-on uh, experience, you know, going out there and, and casting a line or pulling the trigger, duck hunting, you know, whatever it is. So, a lot of their conservation-minded ideas and philosophies come from the classroom, you know, and they're not really, I've seen not getting the full appreciation, you know, Jake, you were talking about, they, they, they start, their eyes start open to understanding how conservation funding um, is done in our, in our country. And, you know, it's built on the backs of the few for the, the good of the many and, and outdoorsmen and women and recreational shooters really, you know, foot that bill and we're happy to do so. Uh, Isabella, comment on that if you would. Yeah, so I I talked a lot about this during my session at the NAFT Summit. Um, we're kind of one of the biggest uh, motivations that CSF has for uh, starting the Collegiate Sportsmen and Women's Coalition and wanting to build it into a national organization is to ensure that students, whether they be you know public policy or political science majors, or whether they're forestry or wildlife biology majors, um, they have the tools and the resources and the knowledge that they need in order to be able to have really well-rounded um, mindsets to uh, as they're going into their careers in the conservation space. Um, and so I think that, you know, the Collegiate Coalition does a good job of that. I mean, as we've seen with talking with Jake and Helen, they're on very different campuses where, you know, on, on one side, you've got a lot more of that science side of things and less of the public policy. And then Jake is the opposite at Ole Miss. Uh, but still, the Collegiate Coalition is adaptable to multiple different types of campuses and is able to really fill those gaps that students have in their education. And I know for me, as I'm kind of building a um, a discussion guide to distribute to students for their regular meetings. I am also primarily looking at myself and looking at the areas in um, 
in my college education where um, I felt that professors had an opportunity to be able to talk about things, whether it's uh, different hunter supported systems for conservation funding um, or even, you know, in history classes talking about market hunting, things like that. Um, so, you know, looking at what I learned in school and finding a way to uh, apply those gaps that I have in my education that I had to fill as I came on board at CSF, uh, make sure that these students are as well-rounded as they mm -hmm. can be. So, um, when you guys are holding events, talk to me about your goals for the, you know, what are you, what are you trying to do when you get everyone together? You know, how are you guys facilitating those and, and, you know, give me a run of show if you would, you know, what, what the kids can expect when they show up and, you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, usually our meetings are do them in the evening, just easier for everybody else. Uh, right now we're doing them in a classroom on campus. Um, it's kind of a small event, just sometimes it interferes with other events. So sometimes we'll have a lot of people, sometimes we'll just have a few, but we try and get food, you know, a little incentive to come, things like that. Um, we usually get a guest speaker or Isabella comes and talks to educate one way or another. Um, we've had Isabella come and explain what CSF is, what y'all do. We've had Ducks Unlimited come. We've had some of the board members come as well. Um, this year, we're trying to get a couple people from the biology department to come and help out, just to give more incentive to get that part of the university involved. Um, it's Our meetings are fairly laid back it's kind of just everybody sitting around and talking for a little bit then we go through this or we have the speaker or isabella and then kind of just go back to talking and just fizzle out as it goes it's kind of more just a little social event than a true meeting mm -hmm. and helen how about your experience when something like that so um we haven't had any official meetings yet with still being in the process but the goal is to do something similar to what Jake's talking about there, I know Def Isabel and I have talked about um, a list of guest speakers to get together for this upcoming spring and next fall. Um, I actually interned with uh, Jeff Duncan when I was at um, Clemson this fall, and he used to be um, a member in the uh, Congressional Sports Fund. So um, I'm hopefully going to reach out to him and get him to speak. Um, and then I have some other connections with the NWTF as well. So that would really be, and as Jake was saying, like, you just want to get people together that are like, like, we're all like-minded in a way. We have a common passion for something and it's just good to get together and hang out and be able to bond over that. Your area, both of your area of the country are, is, is rich in the hunting heritage. So it's, it, I don't want to say it's teed up right for you guys, but it, it would seem that if, um, if locals are staying local and they're not going off to somewhere else for their, their college experience that they're staying there, I'd imagine that there's, there's a lot of receptive folks to that and wanting to probably be a part of your organization once they know it, it's there. I mean, ha has that been a challenge for you guys to get the word out or people, you know, kind of caught on and, you know, Hey, how can I join? Uh, getting the word out has been a little hard, especially, I mean, there's so many different organizations on campus, and one one thing that has helped out a lot and one thing that has been a challenge has been Greek life, surprisingly. Um, Greek life, best way to get a large group of people and go advertise the club to them, but at the same time, you'll have some people that go, you know, I would love to do that, but I'm really involved with this. So you kind of have to explain, like, you know, it's it's not going to be this huge time-consuming thing. It's just something to you know, educate you, introduce you to like-minded people. And then once you get over that hump, then you start to get the interest back of, yeah, I would like to join that. I, I was trying um, about the time that there was a Ducks Unlimited banquet. We had our student-led um, banquet this fall. So I was going around to a bunch of the members during it. And I was like, I've sent it out in the group meet. Like, I know we all have the same similar interests. Is there any way that any of you guys would be interested in joining this? And I had some great feedback and I had some not so great feedback because there are some people that are just about, they they don't want to learn more. They have, they're set in their ways and they want to keep going. And then there was other people like, oh my gosh, send me the information. I'm going to spread it um, within my 
ag classes and things like that. So I guess it really depends on who you're talking to. Um, but and it is difficult because Clemson has over 500 students. Are we dealing with mostly undergrads at this um, point? At this point, I'm doing mostly undergrads. It's mostly undergrads for us. We've gotten a couple law students to come, but they're just, you know, coming to check it out. The majority is undergrads. I got to imagine that as you're getting ready to put a cap on a four-year program and probably contemplating another couple of years anyway, especially folks in the policy and law realm, that at some point you got to start thinking about networking. And how do I turn this into a life? <laughs> how do I start paying my bills with this? How do I start getting connected? And I, and I think Isabella will speak to this, that certainly association with CSF uh, is a hell of a carrot uh, if you're putting it out there, right? And, and that, that ability to, to network on campus and then get connected with the likes of Isabella and the, and the, the Rolodex of folks we're involved with. Yes or no, is it? Yeah, uh, they do have a lot of really good opportunities to, you know, be able to connect with me and learn about CSF and, you know, be able to put that they were involved with um, a CSF supported student organization on their resume, which is awesome. But I think that the bigger piece of the networking puzzle with the Collegiate Coalition is that they're able to um get to connect it, connect with and network with legislators in their state. So um, the the best examples that I have for this are with the Ole Miss chapter. So we took, I think, four students to the Mississippi Sportsman's Caucus clay shoot this past September. Um, and students did great. They had a really fun time. Um, going out and shooting and getting to meet some folks and talk with them about, you know, their careers and stuff like that and get to talk about also the Collegiate Coalition and what they're doing on campus. Um, and then at the end of that event, they did a little bit of a slideshow and an educational opportunity. So it's good that they weren't just there to have fun. They actually took took something away for, from it. Um, but we've got the Mississippi Sportsman's Caucus Fish Fry coming up next month that we will also attend. So that'll be another really good networking opportunity. And Jake and I have also talked about having um, a legislator or uh, my colleague Mark Lance to come to campus and give kind of a legislative overview update at one of their regular meetings and talk to the students about what's going on in the state of Mississippi on the legislative side. Um, so a lot of really good opportunities to, you know, get to connect with legislators in the state, which has been really, really awesome. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. And, and then so structurally, you know, as, as I was talking about people getting on with their life and you guys maturate through the program, what redundancies are set in place? And, you know, oftentimes though, I've found that it's normally one or two people that are spearheading an effort like this. So when they move on, you know, is there motivated um, folks behind you and then, the, you know, their freshmen, sophomores that are moving up that are ready to take those reins once you guys move on? Yeah. Um, the have for five people to help take over has been a little bit of a challenge. Most of the people that are involved in the club are freshmen or sophomores. Mm -hmm. um, upperclassmen, that's been a little bit more of a challenge. But I was telling Isabella a couple of days ago, we have this one kid, he's a freshman, only been on campus for a couple months, and he's fired up. He wants to take over, or after we're gone, he really wants to ride it out and keep it strong and help it build for the next four years. And I mean, that puts a smile on my face every time I talk. About yeah, it. yeah, for sure. Helen, if you can hear me, same question to you uh, in, over there at Clemson. Yep. So I uh, definitely... Um... I'm hoping I'm only a sophomore right now, so I'll I'll have it for a few um, more years. But then after that, I'm hoping that I'll get more involvement. We have quite a bit of seniors right now, actually, because they were wondering if they could hold a position. And I think I can speak to Clemson a little bit. Um, um, Helen is not a senior this year, so she'll be able to stick with the Collegiate Coalition and um, continue to help it grow over the next couple of years, which is going to be really, really awesome. Um, and most of the other students that 
I have collected data on at Clemson are, I think the average class age there is uh, sophomores that are, you know, as far as students that are interested in the Collegiate Coalition. So it's a younger, um, younger crowd. And, you know, I think that as far as I can tell, it shouldn't be too much of an issue to keep things strong and keep things going at Clemson over the next couple of years, just because you do have a lot of younger students who are really excited about bringing this thing to campus and uh, seeing where they can take it. So, Jake, what's uh, if you don't mind me asking, what's your focus and how is how has this program helped you along? So my my focus ever since I started getting interested in politics was that I wanted to work in wildlife conservation. Uh, like I told you earlier, I grew up hunting and fishing. My I mean, some of my first memories are hunting and fishing with my dad and my grandparents and things like that. So I've always wanted to work in that field. And CSF has really opened up a lot of doors for me, being able to actually turn that into a career. I mean, being able to go to events on behalf of CSF with Isabella and a couple other students, I've gotten to meet people and talk to them and find out, you know, I can go and work, you know, for the state legislature or the federal legislature and work on those policies or I can come and work for somebody like y'all or Ducks Unlimited or Teddy Roosevelt, you know, it's really made me see that there are so many opportunities for me out there. Is there, is there a particular focus within that that you got your passion set on or is it just kind of all of it? It's right now, it's kind of all of it. I'm, you know, cast out a big net and you can get a fish. Yeah, yeah. Cast out a small net and they'd be able to quarter. Uh, I, I, I know from, uh, my my colleagues in the space and and good friends in, in both you and Helen's area that it is a, a wild turkey rich environment, and so many come out of uh, both schools uh, with a special interest in conserving the wild turkey. So I just just seen if that was there for you. Yeah, my or what I think there's about six wild turkey federation easements around my hometown. Right. Not, they're everywhere. Well, that's good to hear. That's definitely good to hear, especially in your area where uh, the populations have been challenged at best uh, in the last couple of years here. So that's that's good to know that that's happening down there. Now, I'm assuming she can't hear us. Isabella, can you speak about Helen and do you know her uh, her focus and and you know what she's what she's going to school for? Can you? I can try. Can you hear me or no? Oh, there she is. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm in school um, as an environmental and natural resources major, and I have a concentration in economic policy and a minor in legal studies. So my goal is to go into conservation law or environmental law. I've grown up pretty much being outside and hunting and fishing and all of that. So I know that it's something that I, I, that's just, that's one of my passions. My dad was a game warden for 30 years before um, becoming a senator. So I think his love for the outdoors and all of that really um, had a big impression on me. So that has kind of shaped um, my course of study. Well, that's awesome. I mean, especially coming from the law enforcement side, you got to pretty well-rounded exposure there so many people just see the the science side of it but understanding how the two intersect you know the, then really that experience is well-rounded that can that can make for a heck of a career path you know uh, getting into the state agency and having appreciation for both of those things and then um, advocating for good policy that's that's pretty powerful 100 percent um i think that's a big thing that i've been learning uh especially this past fall and just taking some natural resource economics classes is that you can't just listen to the biologists and you can't just listen to um, the economic side. You everybody has to work together from politicians down um, to uh, law enforcement, especially when it when it comes to hunting and fishing regulations. That's a great take. Um, I'm glad we can hear you again. Yep. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. So what are <laughs> What are, what are next steps for you guys? And then, uh, Isabella, uh, I'll have you rounded out with how people can get in touch with you, but you know, 
Jake and, and Helen, what, what, what's going on in the future here, the very near future and, and long-term goals for each of your programs? So in the near future, uh, like I said earlier, we're going to work on trying to get other departments in the school involved. Um, we have the fish fry event coming up that we're looking forward to. Uh, we're also planning out trying to figure out a field trip out to some easements and different wetlands and or in the state of Mississippi and just get students involved, show them how everything works, what CSF does behind the scenes that a lot of people don't realize. Um, long term, my personal goal is that the classroom that we do the meetings in, kind of a smaller classroom. By the time I leave in a couple months, I want it to yeah. grow big enough to where we have to get a new classroom. Helen, go ahead. I my goals hopefully is to keep growing um, as a coalition, um, not, and that's in Clemson and otherwise. I have some connections at other schools that I'm hoping to pass over to Isabella, where I think we could potentially start coalitions. Um, just with people I know that I've gone to school with. Um, and then with specifically at Clemson, I'm hoping to continue expanding into some of those other conservation organizations and just uh, putting a big emphasis on professional development for students and education on uh, conservation and legislation. That's fantastic. I'm continuously blown away by the how do I put it? Just the smarts, as a lack of a better term, uh, by the young people coming into this space, especially as a, as a concerns policy and, and conservation policy. It's, it's, it's refreshing and it's nice to have that observation uh, because it, I, I think it puts us in good shape for the future where we have young professionals coming out of these institutions with, with good motivations, uh, being able to network within our system. Uh, to get them set up with the right people, in my opinion, the right people, I think Isabella would agree, uh, because you, you guys are going to pick it up, you know, as we all start, as we keep going in our careers and, and some of us sooner than others, uh, you know, hang it up and retire and enjoy our older years that someone's got to keep it going. And, and as you both well know, especially in the hunting space where we see a decline in sportsmen and, and participating in the shooting sports. Um, the, the interest can wane. So as long as people are, are standing pat on the, on the policy side and advocating for, for good legislation to continue the hunting heritage and traditions that we, we, we do love and enjoy in this country, someone's going to keep it going. So it's, it's really nice to speak with folks like you who, who really have it together. It's, it's encouraging. Isabella, if, uh, you know, uh, folks are hearing this. I trust Jake and Ellen are probably going to take this podcast when it drops and put it on their their outlets and let people hear it. So there's more exposure there. Uh, but give the elevator pitch. You know, you're you're looking to talk to young folks and, and get them involved. How? Uh, what's 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 your cell form on this, and why should they be involved? Well, I've got a couple of different cells depending on who I'm talking to. But um, <laughs> well, generally. Um, I found that working directly with students is much easier than trying to find a faculty member on campus or trying to um, find somebody in state who has a connection to a college campus. So really, students, I want to hear from you. Um, and if, you know, talk if the Collegiate Coalition is something that you're interested in bringing to your school, um, does not matter if your school is just like Ole Miss or just like Clemson or something completely different. Um, it's an adaptable program, and I would love to help make that a reality on your campus. Um, you know, if you feel that um, you want more students around you on your campus to be able to learn about um, the difference between conservation and preservation and uh, the importance that hunters, anglers, trappers, and recreational shooters play um, in our world, um, then, you know, the Collegiate Sports Center Women's Coalition is is a is a great place for that, and moreover, it's a it's a great opportunity to be able to network um, with different people who work for different uh, conservation organizations, or with legislators, or with state agency professionals. Um, get a little bit of a head start on your future career. And one of the other things that I've 
found to be really interesting about the organization is that you have this this really interesting system of peer mentorship that arises with the Collegiate Sports and Women's Coalition, where you have, you know, we're not an interest specific organization. So you'll have duck hunters, turkey hunters, um, fly fishermen, et cetera, et cetera, all in one space. So, you know, it's a great, it's a great opportunity if you're wanting to um, expand uh, on the different activities that you do regularly and you'll be able to find people who can take you out and go teach you how to fly fish or take you out to their their granddad's deer camp or whatever else. Um, so that peer mentorship aspect has been really, really cool to to watch and observe. Um, so, you know, if you want to make a, you know, really impactful community on your college campus and have something that you can take ownership of um, and watch it grow over the next couple of years, feel free to shoot me an email. <laughs> yes, so it is imuchi at uh, congressionalsportsman.org. Uh, my last name is M-U-C-C-I, uh, if anyone needs if anyone needs spelling for that. Um, and my email is also on um, the CSF website. So Very you good. can find then- it there. As we wrap here, hitting on a point you brought up in your first pitch, you know, at this level, at this ground level of, of, of young professionals in the space, coming into the space, I think it's such a, uh, an important point to make the difference between conservation and preservation. Because without somebody here pointing that out and making that distinction, as we see, you, there's a lot of confusion in, in those two words. And oftentimes, conservation is used in place of preservation and and the two do not co-mingle they're they're completely opposites and and knowing the difference is vitally important especially if you're going into policy and understanding uh the difference because our paths are completely different they definitely diverge at that that definitions that's fantastic guys thanks so much for for coming on and making the time i'm sorry about the technology woes no matter how how much we we put into this sometimes you just can't fight the uh the matrix gremlins so thanks for hanging helen i really appreciate it and um continued success and and you know like i said when this drops pass it along to your peers motivate some folks i know isabella would like to get uh one in each state and have 50 uh collegiate programs strong uh throughout the country so that would be pretty awesome in the coming years thank you for having, yeah, us. having us all right very good thanks so much guys Thanks so much to our guests. Thanks so much again to Isabella for coming on and, and, and bringing the troops on there with, uh, with Jake and Helen. Us. Poor Helen. We had some, uh, obviously, we had some technical difficulties there uh, where, where her internet was, but uh, we, we persevered and, and, and still was able to get some of her story. So uh, there you have it. Um, fantastic program. And certainly Isabella and, and her college uh, student leadership are, are working real hard to you know, collaborate with people across the nation and, and just really, you know, get folks dialed in and, and, and plugged in to, to the outdoor policy space and, and really give um, young, young leaders, young professionals an opportunity uh, to really get a, get a head start as they embark on a professional career. And man, do we, uh, as most of you know, we, we need the help in this area. Um, it's, uh, we got our, our challenges and the more bright minds we have speaking on behalf of sportsmen and women of this country, the better uh, we're going to be, or at least we're, we're going to have a, a better fight at any rate. And, and, and an update, uh, didn't want to allude to it during the program because I didn't know that we had officially done this, but we're welcoming in LSU to the program as well. Very excited about that, that addition to the uh, collegiate coalition family there so dr brett collier friend of mine dear friend of mine turkey hunting whiz kid fanatic whatever you want to call him he's a he's a heck of a guy uh does some great work over there with um not just students in the wildlife program but he's got a him and a partner of his uh for a little while now have um embarked on a mentorship program for kids of all walks uh over there at lsu so you know, whatever their major is, they have an interest in the outdoors. They have an interest in hunting for the first time. They've been doing that 
and it's a pretty remarkable program. So uh, very apropos to see LSU with the leadership of uh, Dr. Brett Collier and advising those students to come on board. More thrilled to have them as part of this family and uh, expect good things out of there. And, and, and if you're familiar with my past work, me and uh, the good doc, we cut it up pretty well on a mic, so it makes for a good opportunity to get get him on this particular program, introduce him to you all, and uh, learn what they got going on down there at LSU, and then find out what their what their goals and aspirations are for uh, for the CSF's collegiate program. So there you have it, folks. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informational. If you have a college student in your life that you think would benefit from this, certainly you know, reach out to us here. Uh, you can reach out to Isabella if you go on to Congressional Sportsman dot org you can go to our about us and look at our staff profiles and there you will find contact for isabella she'd love to love to talk to the student in your life that has a aspiration as, has aspirations for this line of work and uh could benefit from a an introduction so that's it guys it's uh as this drops it's gonna be february 15th no yes february 15th i'm getting lost in my days we're moving towards spring. Uh, in my opinion, the best part of t- time of the year uh, before long here, Florida will be ushering in a youth turkey season. And then it's, uh, then it's on from there. We get into March and then uh, let the good times roll. Things start green enough again. The turkey start gobbling. Fish start running and the, and the blooms are blooming. And uh, it's exciting. So uh, looking forward to the turkey season. Uh, looking forward to bringing you stories from the woods with our our policy partners, with our industry partners as we go forward in the spring. We'll certainly off, offer great opportunity uh, for some great storytelling and then, you know, just bringing you guys behind the scenes and not everything so, not everything so strict and stringent all the time. We do have fun and, and so do our, our partners at the state capitals and at the federal level. So I uh, hope to bring some of that to you. As this episode is dropping, Our partners at the National Wild Turkey Federation are kicking off their convention and sports show. It is the biggest turkey family event uh, gathering, and that is going to be in Nashville. So uh, yours truly will will be on hand uh, for that event. I hope to bring you guys uh, some sound for what is effectively termed the biggest family reunion in the sporting community. And, And I would agree with that. I can attest to that. So hopefully I bring you guys some of that flavor. For a, a future program here, give you a NWTF, a convention and sports show wrap up and bring you some sights and sounds uh, from the show floor and from leaders in conservation and in policy. Uh, CSF, for our part, we are hosting a, a policy reception uh, so that we get to uh, let our partners know and thank our partners for the hard work over the last, uh, last year and, and update them on the hard work of our team and enjoy the successes and, and the successes that are made possible with our partnerships. So again, uh, hope to bring you that future show until then. Uh, think spring, think spring. We're getting there. Every time we hear a new TSV, uh, podcast, we're that much closer uh, to the warm weather. So until next time, be safe, be kind out there and we will see you soon. See you later. Thanks for joining us on this edition of the sportsman's voice podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Your support is crucial, and you can help us out right now by leaving a review, filling in those five stars where available, sharing this episode with friends and family, and engaging with us socially. CSF can be found on Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter. Together, we can protect the outdoor sports we love and continue to keep you informed wherever you are. That's it for this week. Until next time, see you later.